Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 199. As always, I'm your host, James Shotwell, and it is great to be with you again. My guest this week is none other than my pal Colin Dyden, better known as Little Hurt. Now, Colin has a big history in alternative and pop music. He was with the band The Mowgli's for the better part of a decade, and since that time, he has been working on finding a sound of his own, all while writing songs for some of the biggest stars today. Colin and I talk about finding that sound and how it led to the birth of Little Hurt, which is probably one of the most exciting projects I've heard in 2020 so far. Little Hurt recently released this single called Alaska that will soon be serviced to radio, and let me tell you, it is the song of summer 2020. For a time when we are all just itching to get out of our house, get away from everything we know, reinvent ourselves, just feel human again, Alaska is the soundtrack to quarantine you've been waiting for. Before we get there, however, I need to tell you a few quick things. This episode of Inside Music is brought to you by Holix, the music industry's leading promotional distribution platform. Join Holix today and your first month of service is free. Visit holix.com, that's H-A-U-L-I-X.com for details. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. It's called Music Biz, that's music B-I-Z. You can stream the show there as well as a, watch a ton of original content. And finally, make sure you check out Little Herd. It's great, it's gonna make your year It's something you absolutely need to hear. But right now, the only thing you absolutely have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Inside Music. doing today i'm good man i'm just hanging in there just uh kind of the same as everyone else you know just bored and getting through the fucking day (laughs) absolutely i feel like some days i feel like i've kind of just adjusted to it and i'm fine but then like today in michigan where i live it's like our first day where it's probably in the mid 70s all year so far and so you have that itch that's like let's go like let's go out like let's go do something but no there's nothing to do yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, I was telling someone the other day, like, I, uh, I'm i actually a lot more introverted than a lot of my friends. So this has been a lot easier for me than it is for a lot of people. Um, I'm good at staying in, but uh, it is, you know, that has a limit too. Absolutely. I mean, I work from home full time. So I am used to being here in this apartment day in and day out. But it is a little bit different having my uh, my better half here at the house with me every single day, and then we have two cats and a dog. So in our tiny apartment, it gets a little uh, gets a little hectic sometimes. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me, man, what have you been doing to stay sane? Like, I obviously releasing music, and we'll get to that in a second. But what's your uh, what's like your daily routine? Like, how are you how are you getting through this? Um. You know, I find that every day is exactly the same. Um, you know, I get up and and my problem too is that I get up at like 7.30 or 8 a.m. So like I have like a whole day of like a day's worth of like misery before anyone else wakes up. So I, I um, you know, I get up and um, chill and, you know, maybe like go walk around and go for, you know, so I, go, I go for a hike sometimes, but before they close the um, parks and stuff. But, um, and then I write, you know, I write songs and that's it, man. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah, I'm an, I'm an early riser as well. I tend to be up by, by seven usually, but I have as of late definitely been hit with the, uh, I get up, I get going and then I'm just like, what am I, why, why am I doing this right now? Especially on the East Coast, because I deal with a lot of people on the West Coast, like you are, and it, it, it's just a waste of my. Like I don't know why I'm awake. No one's doing anything. The productivity right. is not that high right now. You can't be like emailing labels or publicists or. You know, there's sure. no there's no nine a.m. meetings right now. Totally. Yeah. No. I'm definitely taking a. I take a lot of naps, dude. <laughs> so, naps are a strong game. Well, tell me, man. Let me know the origin story of this of this new project of yours. Like, take me back to the beginning. I want to talk about like your plan of releasing singles. I want to know the I want to know the whole nine yards. So, tell me the yeah. very basic one hundred and one story. Sure. Um, so, you know, I was in a band for about ten years called the Mowgli's, and um, 
it was like a pop rock band that I was in. And then I quit that band um, when I started talking to Sony um, just because, it, you know, I'd been doing the same thing forever and I was just ready to mix it up and, you know, kind of challenge myself. I'm not the kind of person who's comfortable just uh, scraping by, you know, I, I need to do something that I think is going to, you know, be challenging and, um, and, you know, take me to levels that I, you know, that are impressive to me. And so I, um, I ended up leaving and I started little hurt and, um, I think I signed, like they offered me a deal, like within 48 hours of hearing my first song, better drugs. Um, and that was it, man, that, you know, now, now I'm just, uh, we just put out Alaska. That's going to radio here soon. So some exciting stuff. Absolutely. And I think Alaska is probably my favorite of the songs you've done so far, but it also might just be seasonally. Like it, I feel like it's coming at just the right time because everyone's starting to get that itch of going outside, but also like road trips, driving the car with the windows down. This feels like that kind of song to me. Yeah, totally dude. It's, um, it's really like, it's maybe my favorite too, all the songs. Um, it's really cool. And I, you know, the reaction to it has just been absolutely amazing. So that's been exciting to, to witness and to feel. When you are working on your songs, you have a really good knack for like these little earworm moments. And even if it's not the entire song, you can like write a couple of lines, the hook on Alaska, especially where it's just like, even before you know the words, the, the melody gets stuck in your head. So for you as a creator, because I know you've been doing this for a while, you've always, you've had this skill for a long time. Let, take me to like the creative process of it. Like when you're working, when you're working on songs, are you somebody that like uses your voice memos on your iPhone and it's just like singing melodies to yourself or well, where are these ideas coming from, at least in the very early stages? Yeah, you know, I, I do. My voice notes are a very funny place. Um, I actually woke up last night at 4 a.m. and like sang some nonsense into my phone and then passed back out again. That's just kind of my, my process. And um, I'm really interested in, in catchy music. I really love really catchy pop music. It's like fascinating to me and I am attracted to it. It's what I like to listen to. And so that's not exactly what I do, but my stuff is pretty pretty catchy. and. Um, I find that challenging and fun and, you know, um, that's why I put a lot of focus into that, into writing stuff that people want to sing along to, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I like to counteract that with, you know, some lyrics that have a level of emotional depth that maybe isn't always found alongside music that's as catchy as mine is. That is that is kind of your Trojan horse, if you will. Like you sneak in something very meaningful and deep into a song that, if you're not paying attention to it, you'd be like, "Oh, that sounds like a like a radio pop song." And then as it grabs your attention, you're like, "Oh, we're we're going deeper than I was planning to go listening to this yeah. kind of music today." Right, right, right. Yeah, that's um kind of my signature, man. Like I, everyone's got their thing. I mean, some people like they have a shtick and they dress a certain way or they have, you know, whatever, like my, my thing has always been balancing and, uh, you know, really happy kind of sounding melodies with lyrics that aren't necessarily always very happy. Well, let's talk a little bit more about Alaska since that is the new song. People can find it everywhere. I've been listening to it a lot. I've probably driven my partner insane listening to it and just kind of singing along to the hook. So tell me about the origin of that song in particular. Like, is that kind of a, is that like a true story that you're describing or some, some true events or where does that come from? Yeah. Um, you know, I sat down with a couple of friends that I write with frequently and uh, I don't know what was going on that day, but that, just thought, that song just spilled out. Like we, we still talk about that day, me and my friends about how Alaska happened and how it just seemed to come tumbling out. It was very, very bizarre, actually like a kind of atypical of how it usually happens. Um, but, you know, I think that I was probably just going through some shit in my, in my, you know, reaction to that is just wanting to throw everything away and just leave <laughs> and just say, fuck it. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a feeling that everyone relates to, you know, I didn't actually move to Alaska, but like that feeling of wanting to just, to just throw away everything and leave and go start again somewhere else. I mean, everyone's felt that before everyone on planet earth. Absolutely. Have you had the chance to go to Alaska? I have, I've been to Alaska a couple of times. I've played shows there with my other band. It's so wonderful. I've been a few times myself and it's, it's like, 
it's the one place I always tell people like you should see that before you go. Like forget Hawaii, forget the other places. Like Alaska's Alaska's the secret gym. It is unbelievable, man. We uh I've played Anchorage and I've played uh Fairbanks, Alaska. I think maybe one more place too, but um it's a absolutely fucking gorgeous. And you know, this song really isn't even about Alaska. That you could switch out the word Alaska with any place. It's just, a, it just, it just seems very far away. This, the feeling of wanting to run very far away is really the point, you know? Absolutely. And it, it is coincidental, but it makes sense to choose Alaska because I do feel like it, it seems like a place of rebirth for people. If you've been there, if you haven't, it is so far away in your mind. And if you actually go there, it is very far away that you feel like anything can happen. You can be anyone you want to be and you have to come back different. Yeah, it just it just sing. It just sings better than Nebraska too. So, <laughs> yeah. Plus, there's always like I feel like you say Alaska. It does have a little bit of mystery to it. But if you were like moved to Nebraska, yeah. it would be like a head turn in the other way. Like what? That yeah, w- that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be as cool. <laughs> yeah. No. No offense to no offense to our Nebraska listeners. It's a fine state. There's a lot of road. I don't know. There's there's some a lot stuff of going road. On. Exactly. Exactly. Well, man, I like your approach to doing the singles as, as opposed to like just dropping us an EP or an album. Has this always been your plan with the project from day one? Is it just like, we'll put out a song, do everything we can with it and then get to the next song? Or how did you land on this release strategy? Yeah. You know, um, I don't know that I had a a whole lot of say in it. Um, They're just kind of telling me, we're going to put out a song. Okay. We're going to put another song. Okay. If they were like, we're going to make a record, I'd say, okay, too. But you know, the thing about it is that like, I don't feel the need to put out a record. I feel like it's a singles world right now, you know, at the very least is, but um, I don't see the point of me putting out a full length album at this moment. I think I just got to keep hitting people with singles. Um, but that being said, at some point I will, it's just, that's the kind of um, the way that it's going now, you know? No, I think that it's the right approach right now. It's just I don't see enough artists embracing it outside of, you know, pop or hip hop. I feel like it's it's starting to seep out there and it's worth exploring more. Now, with that in mind, how much material are you, for lack of a better word, sitting on right now? A lot, man. I, I'm you know, I'm a pretty prolific songwriter. I like I write for myself a lot, I write for other artists a lot. Um, I mean I have definitely enough for a full length record already you know, in my, in my phone. So, um, that's, that's never going to be the issue for me or someone like me. I'm never going to have trouble coming up with songs. I mean, that's all that I do. The dream, right? That's all you got to worry about. I guess so. Yeah. (laughs) Well, man, I want to go back to that phone thing for one second. Now I've talked to a lot of artists who do the iPhone for voice memos. I use it myself. Sometimes when I'm thinking about how we're going to do the intro to the podcast and stuff, I will record myself just talking out like things I need to say or things I want to say. But is your, is one of your greatest fears the day that someone like you die and someone's going through your phone and scrolls through your notes app? You know, man, I hadn't even um, thought about that, but that's fucking dark. I, uh, (laughs) <laughs> I think that, I think that I should like put a contingency like I should say like you know if I if I do die my my phone goes to my best friend and he gets to decide what yes. what's disseminated and what's not because mm. there's definitely a lot of stuff I do not want getting out there a lot of like song ideas that probably aren't very good or that are mm-hmm. very embarrassing so mm-hmm. I think I'll let someone else decide what we release to the world posthumously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I it used to be laptops, right? I'd be like, oh, I hope we don't get our laptop stolen. It has all our demos on it. But these days, like demos are one thing because at least you have something of a solid idea there, but like your voice, mo- your voice memos are like, like a third of a solid idea. A lot of the time it's just oh, like yeah. you babbling. Yeah. And sometimes it's, you're saying really dumb shit and your voice sounds really bad. So I definitely, there's a lot of stuff I don't want getting out. <laughs> Yeah, I, I am often thankful that voice memos don't upload to the cloud unless you ask them to. Like, it's it's just something I don't need floating in the ether if anything ever happens to me. A hundred percent agree with that, my friend. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you told me that you have an Alaska radio push coming up. What do you have coming up uh, with other music right now? Like, do you already have the next single picked out? You know, I don't yet. I don't know what the next single is going to be. Um, 
I think I have a couple ideas of what it could be. Um, you know, right now the song better, my song better drugs is at radio and they're going to switch over to Alaska just cause the reaction was so great. I mean, like streams have been absolutely fucking nuts for that song. Like people really jumped on it and it's been a really special experience. Um, but you know, I don't know what the next single is going to be yet, but I think that, you know, we'll probably decide that in the next couple of weeks here because that's a conversation that should start happening. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, we should touch on better drugs because it is, a, it is a really catchy song and you know, whatever Alaska is doing right now, I noticed today that it's already got like half the streams on Spotify that better drugs does, you know, whatever it's doing, that's because better drugs laid that foundation. So let's go to picking that as your lead single. Cause it is still a relatively new song. I'm always curious, especially in your position where it's like, you have some people that know who you are. A lot of people that don't know who you are. You're making your first impression is like, this is the new me what makes better drugs the song to do that well um that was the first song that i ever showed my my label um that uh i was still in the band i was still in my band when i wrote that song so i showed it to my team and i was like you know that's the song that got me signed i was i just showed it to a friend and he showed it to someone at sony and then they were like oh yeah this is amazing this is it so that song was really special for me because it kind of gave me the push that I needed to start this project and to be, you know, brave enough to jump off the cliff and leave my, my band and do this. I mean, that song gave me that confidence because they were like, we want to do something with this. This is special. Um, <laughs> no, that makes sense to me. I'm curious because Little Hurt is a project that seems like it can be really anything you want to explore. So are, are there songs you've been writing that don't feel like they fit in this project that maybe exist for something else? Or do you, are you honed in on like what this is to you sonically? Yeah, no, I would say like only one out of every 15 songs that I write, I think is perfect for this project. I'm so picky about what's good enough for this thing. Um, so most of my songs that I write are not for this and they go to other artists or, um, you know, whatever, or they just die on a hard drive. But, um, you know, when it comes to releasing what I think is right for Little Hurt, I'm like super precious about that. And I want to make sure that like a, the lyrical content is like up to par and everything's up to you know, my standards. Can you expand on that a little bit? What are the standards of a Little Hurt song? Like, what is the bare minimum to be like an acceptable Little Hurt song in your book? Um, I think the lyrics have to be, they, not, they have to be not generic. I don't like generic lyrics from, for my project. Um, and I think that I have to fit the song kind of pushed me in a way. Like it was um, challenging and it was, it's interesting and it's not just a uh, middle of the road, like fucking dudes jamming on a guitar. And like, I just wanted to be, um, Imp impress it. I want to impress myself. I want to be like, God damn, this is a good song. Um, because, you know, I write songs for a living. Like I, I do it for, for other bands all day. And so it's like, I, it's really easy to get jaded, but um, you know, for me, I want to make sure that what I, the product that I'm putting out is as good as, as good as I can make it. Now, as somebody that has been able to make a career in songwriting, I'm always curious, especially being in it as long as you have been, do you find that it gets easier or more difficult to write a song that is up to par across the board, whether it's for somebody else or for yourself? Like, have you kind of nailed the process of songwriting or is it harder and harder to write something where you're like, this is good enough? Um, you know, that's a really good question. I think that the bar sort of raises as time goes on, you know? Um, as you get better and as you listen and digest more music and you hear more amazing music and people like great songwriters that are pushing the boundaries and constantly pushing the bar up, you know, like, um, I think that what's good enough, you know, now is not going to be good enough for me in a couple of years. And that's like a trajectory you can follow back, you know, years and years and years. Um, like what was good enough, um, two years ago wasn't good enough for it would not be good enough for me now so it's just that's the natural evolution of things and that's you know maybe partly why i had to quit my other band and keep moving because i just i just think people change and you know you grow and you evolve and that that bar that you should keep sitting that bar so it's hard to reach or else what the fuck are you doing like what are you just like grasping at low hanging fruit like low hanging fruit like that's not interesting 
So I just like to put, place the bar a little out of my reach so I can have something to kind of uh, grasp at. I think that that's the way to do it. And now let me ask you this with that in mind. What is the last song that really caught you by surprise that you didn't write? Like, is there something you're obsessed with right now where you're just like, I wish I'd written that or I don't even know how they wrote this song? Oh, yeah. I have that experience all the time. Oh, um, my God. Uh, like, let me look at my Spotify. I think I had one of those moments today. Um, like, I have those moments with John Bellion sometimes. Um, uh, yeah, man, like, I don't know. I have, uh, I have that feeling a lot, a lot, for sure. I just t- kind of hard on the spot, but, um, you definitely, I definitely always hear things and I'm like, God, I cannot believe that someone created that. And it's so amazing to me. You know, I mean, I had that feeling today with Harvest Moon by Neil Young when I was driving down the freeway. Like I was like, God, what a beautiful song. I can't believe someone created that, you know? Um, so yeah, that's a that's a pretty common thing I think for for artists. Uh, uh, yeah, it's something that I love to discuss, and I, I like when you know a few years can pass, especially if it's something that got a lot of popularity, and you hear that song again, and that that uh, you know pop culture wave of affection is worn off, and you can just hear it and just be like, I can't believe that somebody was able to like that no one had thought of this idea before or this melody, and that it exists, and we don't just talk about how good some of these songs are on repeat forever. They're just like, there's so much music. It's weird that things can get lost in the shuffle anymore. Absolutely. Yeah, no, totally. Um, I would say I have that, I have that experience with songs like multiple times a week. So I'm also just like, I'm just a music fan too. Like I just love, like when someone blows my mind with music, I just, I, I just love it. It's a, it's a, it's also an industry side thing. Like I went to the grocery store this morning uh, to buy stuff for us, and on my uh, between leaving the house, going there, and getting back, I had listened to the new Jason Isbell record, the new Future record, and then a ton of singles off my release weekly. And I was just like, I don't think most people spend this much time listening to like consuming all of the different things each week. But if you work in music, it's like a common thing. It's like, yeah, I've heard nine albums this week. It's fine. Just that's pretty average. No, t- totally. And and I love Jason Isbell, by the way. But um, you know. A lot of artists and people that I know in bands, like they just listen, spend a lot of time listening to stuff that sounds like them, which is so weird to me. Like I never listened to like if you look look at my Spotify, like my playlist, there's nothing on there that sounds even remotely close to Little Hurt, and that's just weird. Like a lot of people I worked with in the past were just like listen to stuff that sounded like their bands, and I was like, that's just bizarre because you're not you're not you know consuming any new information. That's going to lead to you writing anything, you know, different than what you've been doing forever. Like you're just kind of living in a vacuum and you're in a cycle of listening to the same kind of music, creating the same kind of music over and over and over. And it's just like, how do you fucking break out of that? Like, yeah, go listen to Future and go listen to Jason Isbell. Like, you know, like I don't want to listen to fucking stuff that sounds like me. I, yeah, I, I blows my mind how people do it. Because also, if you're going to like create the same sound you're listening to, then you're just going to be trying to create something similar to whatever you enjoy in that genre. And I feel like you got to get there and blend blend the palette together a little bit. Find how to combine all those things that you like. 100%, man. Mm. Well, let me ask you this before I let you go. It's, it's a, obviously a weird time. I feel like that's probably a question everyone's bringing up in every interview. But knowing that you can't play shows right now, knowing that you have to rely on music, like what are you finding is the best way for you to get the word out about Little Hurt and you know, get people to pay attention to your music in a world where you can't just like literally go get in their face and be like, this is me. Yeah, totally. Um, well, I'm pretty, like, you know, I'm kind of getting tired of all the live streams. That being said, I still do some and I still like have to, but I think that like we've kind of done that to people a lot. <laughs> I think it's exhausting. And, um, you know, I'm really lucky. Like my fan base right now over the past few months has become so like activated and so close knit. And for some reason, there's just a lot of momentum happening within this little hurt, little, this little family we have going here. And um, it's just, they've made it really, really easy to, to uh, feel like I'm, I'm onto something. It's, you know, some, some uh, artists, I don't think feel like they have a close connection with their fans, but I really do, especially right now, like more than I've ever had in the past ever at any point in my career. So um, it's cool, man. I, I feel like we're all kind of uh, riding this wave together. 
Well, that's great, man. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. I mean, I feel I feel like I've joined the wave since I heard Alaska. It really made me go back and listen to everything else. And and I do see you burning up some of these Spotify playlists, like the new alt. You're you're ranked up real high on there, and I like I like seeing that. I love seeing the seeing the growth because so many of those quote unquote new playlists, it's artists that I mean they have new songs, but they themselves are not new. So when I see you. Right duking it out up there between like Judah and the line and ex ambassadors. I'm like, okay, see now you're going to, that's real recognition. Uh huh. Yeah. Thanks man. <laughs> I, I that's awesome. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Ed was just going crazy about you before I listened to the song. He was like, hey, you've got to hear this is going to change your life. And I feel like I am at life is slightly different now. So he's right. <laughs> shout out to ed for that and uh thank you for taking the time to talk to me today hey thank you so much man i appreciate you absolutely have a good one